So let's start. Uh, once again, uh, hello to everybody. I'm very happy to be here at my home and to have the opportunity to share my um, and discoveries and uh, my studies uh, with uh, you. Uh, late Paleolithic communities on the North European plain during uh, the, the late glacial were, were very um, flexible and uh, um, they lived in constantly changing environment. So I would like to show you the dynamic of uh, this um, environmental changes and the flexibility of uh, late Paleolithic uh, communities. Uh, I would like to show you how uh, they can use the landscape, how, to, how they uh, can behave in this constantly changing uh, environment and uh, how they um, uh, developed uh, in this um, environment. Um, so let's start. I would like to uh, cite these uh, two sentences because I think that is the, the light motif of uh, our lecture uh, today. Uh, the first one is to, um, given by uh, Berit Eriksen in 19th, that those people were engaged in a constant dialogue with their environment. They were, of course, depending on their surroundings, but uh, through the factor of cognition, they themselves were controlling the degree of this dependence. Uh, because um, uh, it was only in the 60s, uh, uh, last century, that um, hunter-gatherers were seen as um, um, more uh, intelligence, uh, not so pure, uh, not so poor, not uh, so um, depend, not so dependent on the environment, and that the foraging life way was not as rosy, but neither was it nasty, brutish, and sharp. So uh, only in the uh, uh, 60s, um, last century, uh, they were seen as um, really uh, people who can, uh, who can lead the dialogue with the environment, that they were not unlucky, that uh, they live in a, uh, such um, harsh, uh, so harsh conditions, but uh, that they can manage in this uh, landscape. And later, uh, the studies of um, um, Neolithic uh, people showed that um, they have to um, they have to have more time for. Um, uh, for providing food that hunter-gatherer uh, uh, societies. So um, it's for us, sometimes it um, could um, uh, sound, it, it uh, could sound uh, a little bit, a little bit um, um, awkwardly that, uh, that um, these people were not so dependent on the environment conditions, but uh, our studies in uh, last years really showed uh, that uh, um, we uh, deal with communities that uh, know, that knew the, their landscape, uh, their facilities, their um, possibilities. Uh, um, in using this like uh, this uh, landscape uh, very uh, in very different ways, so um, uh, we have to 
um, come back to um, uh, to uh, the the beginning that the late glacial maximum, uh, which uh, glaciated, glaciated the was the vast um, area of uh, northern Europe and also uh, United uh, States um, uh, was um, was uh, the factor uh, which uh, uh, create the landscape which was settled by uh, hunter gatherer uh, societies uh, and um, it was <clears throat> about uh, 20,000 uh, years uh, ago when the um, ice sheet uh, started to uh, going to going to the to the north uh, so the landscape was um, really new and the the morphology of of the la of the landscape was very diversified and um, this area of northern europe uh, was uh, not settled at uh, at that time obviously uh, i would like to show you the chronostratigraphy of the late glacial against the uh, grip below temperature curve uh, with the um, boundaries of particular particular and as you can see, the climate was very changeable uh, during the late glacial. We have some uh, very warm periods, this in, in, the, in the yellow, and also these warm periods uh, were broken by very um, harsh uh, periods and very harsh climatic conditions. So the climatic conditions were um, were very unstable in that time. And um, these people uh, have to live in this constantly changing environment and constantly changing uh, conditions. Uh, and we know that the climatic conditions and environment um, doesn't um, define uh, people, but we know that people have to live in uh, that conditions. They have to um, they have to hunt, they have to settle, they have to move and, and so on. So these environmental conditions um, were, were very important factors of their life. So as you can see, the situation uh, was very uh, changeable and unstable. I have to um, tell some words about uh, land, which uh, doesn't exist. I don't land the very important part of Northern Europe. As you can see, at uh, the end of the Pleni Glacial, uh, Europe uh, looked completely different. So the Great uh, Britain wasn't um, an uh, island. Uh, there was the connection between the island, now the island, and the, the land. And um, all these areas uh, were not only probably, but for sure were settled. Uh, so we lose a very important part of our prehistory and um, our knowledge about these uh, communities which uh, settled this uh, area um, is still 
a little bit unknown. Why? Because the Doggerland uh, sunk into um, um, ocean and uh, um, sea uh, waters and uh, the level of the um, ocean and was uh, 130 uh, uh, meters uh, lower than now. Uh, so um, all these archaeological uh, sites are into water now uh, and uh, uh, we have to uh, excavate uh, them by underwater archaeology uh, and sites um, are located um, um, for from five to 30 uh, meters deep in the um, water now. So uh, the excavations are very uh, expensive as you can uh, imagine and really not uh, easy. So uh, the situation is um, a little bit similar that we can observe uh, nowadays because we still um, we still uh, can um, uh, hear about uh, the, the announcement about the uh, uh, danger um, of uh, um, of uh, sea uh, that the uh, sea uh, level is higher and higher, and uh, sometimes uh, very catastrophic uh, visions uh, are produced that some of our uh, uh, lands can can be um, underwater because of melting the. Um, uh, the the ice on on the North Pole, as as we as we know. So uh, let's go uh, further. There are the first reconstruction uh, reconstructions how the Doggerland uh, could look um, like. So um, this um, picture is uh, a little bit. Um, um, simple, but uh, we can see that uh, during the, the time the Doggerland was smaller and smaller. And some very um, crucial uh, studies on uh, this land were undertaken, one, were undertaken by, uh, by uh, Gaffney and his uh, team. And we can see that um, the Doggerland was a very um, diversified, the, the morphology of uh, this area was very diversified. So we can, um, uh, th there are there are ma many lakes, rivers, wide valleys, tunnel valleys, uh, bogs, dunes. So very um, good um, morphological uh, conditions for hunter gatherer uh, societies. And uh, you can see also that uh, the. Um, Coast lines, uh, nowadays coast uh, lines, uh, are just carpeted by archaeological sites. Um, this is the map of Europe uh, showing the currently known uh, sites. And the total number of the, the, the sites is 2,650 at least. So we can imagine how much information is uh, lost. And uh, we have to um, keep in our mind that um, our knowledge is uh, still um, 
not uh, is is the knowledge is uh, still lacking some very important uh, information about these communities and the dogger land. Why this land was so important? Um, as you can see, that we have we are now in the middle of late glacial, and the dogger land is not so big as uh, previously. We can see some islands now, and the the um, sea level is um, higher and higher, and uh, some of the some parts of the dogger land um, is um, sunk into into um, water. So uh, in 30s last century, the first find was uh, discovered, this uh, harpoon made of uh, deer antler. Uh, and um, the story of Doggerland settlement um, has been started uh, because um, archaeologists um, have um, some proofs of settlement at uh, this uh, area. Uh, later, uh, in the um, uh, in in our uh, century, uh, important information about the settlement of this land were added. So we can uh, see here part of the uh, human school and a fragment of a nice ornamented um, uh, tool, uh, which uh, uh, proved that this uh, area was settled by probably Father Messer uh, people. Uh, the C14 um, dating uh, um, situated this settlement in the mid of late glacial. So some pictures of uh, underwater um, sites from a late uh, Mesolithic because uh, the, the dogger land uh, still was um, present at, at that time. There are some uh, pictures from the north uh, of um, Germany. And uh, around uh, 800,000 um, BP, there was a huge tsunami uh, which struck Northwest Europe. And uh, we have um, some uh, proofs on the uh, um, Great Britain uh, coast uh, of the of the of the tsunami, but this um, tsunami uh, didn't um, destroy the dogged land uh, completely. Uh, it was uh, at at that time uh, we we can. Uh, uh, observed the Heilig event. Uh, so it was um, the, um, it, it could be caused by the global um, environmental uh, changes and uh, the, this uh, short period of very um, harsh uh, environmental conditions. And um, as we can see here, um, the dogger land uh, was smaller and smaller, and um, they vanished uh, 5,050 hundred years uh, BP. So the huge amount of information is lost, and um, this um, this dogger land can um, or allow allows us to, to, to imagine how the climatic conditions influence uh, 
people, people settlement and the um, living uh, on the edge, uh, which is the title of uh, my presentation. I think it's, it, it is a um, uh, good word, a uh, good sentence, uh, which define the, the, the uh, lives of uh, ancient communities. And uh, I think that we can also predict uh, on the basis of the Doggerland, we can predict and we can model uh, uh, the environmental conditions and the results of changing uh, conditions. I mean, rising the temperatures and melting the huge amount of ice. So it is only um, to, to, to have a knowledge that uh, the environment is, is changing and is uh, unstable. So now the few words about the settlement. As you can see, uh, here, we have the late Magdalenian settlement at the not North European plain, but on the belt of uplands, because the environmental conditions uh, were still um, unfavorable uh, for late glacial um, communities. Uh, we can see the Doggerland uh, here. And uh, the settlement of Magdalenian um, groups uh, was located only uh, in the belt of uh, European uplands. So there are some pictures uh, well known about uh, in incredible uh, beauty of uh, um, rock art, uh, some um, bone items uh, which were produced by Magdalenian uh, people and the very important information that probably uh, these societies domesticated the best um, man, uh, human uh, friend, which is uh, the dog. So the latest um, news about uh, this issue, which were given just a few days ago, that uh, it could be uh, 16,000 years uh, ago. And the first uh, communities which settled the North European plain, which recolonized this area, uh, is Hamburgian um, uh, culture, Hamburgian societies. Uh, these, uh, so these societies uh, are called Roswellian uh, at um, uh, Great uh, Britain. And it is the complex of culture, late Magdalenian Hamburger, Hamburger uh, culture, um, Hamburgian cultural and Roswellian, uh, which um, are very uh, similar to each other. But the um, Hamburgian people uh, are the, the first, uh, the pioneers of, um, uh, of the pioneers of the North European uh, plain. We can see that the period uh, when they um, exist is called Bulling, the, the first uh, warmer uh, period during the late uh, glacial. So the um, formation of park tundra environment uh, were um, present at uh, that times. Uh, what is very important that uh, Hamburgian settlement um, were um, present also in the uh, 
young uh, moraine landscape. So uh, it uh, can um, prove that uh, the um, people uh, were very flexible and uh, they could manage in a quite harsh uh, conditions. There are some um, um, fossil director, so the, the main and the very characteristic um, tools of Hamburgian settlements, so, I mean, Zinkens and uh, shouldered points. Uh, there is uh, the fire um, and uh, uh, Havel the points, the um, late uh, um, late phase of Hamburgian uh, settlement development, uh, which is present only in the um, in Denmark and in the north part of uh, Germany. And uh, the um, long discussion um, has been known about the um, game. Uh, which uh, was used by uh, these uh, hunter-gatherers. So big game, I mean, reindeers versus small game uh, hunting. And um, we uh, can see that uh, their subsistence strategies were diversified. Of course, uh, they hunted reindeers, and uh, it was the uh, main um, um, the, the the main animal in uh, their menu. But they also uh, hunted or uh, on um, small mammals uh, and uh, and fishes. Uh, so. The, the, this um, uh, these uh, bombs uh, were uh, discovered at Milkovice site in western Poland, um, while in north part of uh, Germany in Adelsburgian uh, Tunnel Alley, uh, hundreds of reindeers uh, uh, skeletons were uh, discovered. So we can see uh, the, the diversity in hunting, in uh, subsistence uh, strategies. And of course, uh, the, the, the sites um, can, uh, can uh, be settled at different uh, seasons. So uh, I just only want to show that they use what mm, they could use. So that all animals um, uh, which um, uh, lived at, at that time. And uh, I would also present uh, some uh, few words about the Federmesser uh, settlement. And um, as you can see, this period of time uh, called Aleret was the um, climatic optimum of the late glacial. But that climatic optimum uh, were broken uh, um, was broken by uh, many of um, um, very uh, harsh uh, periods. Uh, for for example, uh, we can uh, see here the Gertensee uh, oscillation, very um, cold period during uh, this uh, generally warm period. So. Uh, the um, fluctuating uh, environmental conditions um, 
played a very important role uh, in, uh, in their lives and influenced um, their behavior <clears throat> uh, because they uh, who uh, had adapted or um, modified uh, their subsistence uh, strategies. Um, previously, uh, feather messer uh, communities uh, was um, seen as um, something like a monolith, uh, but the um, studies, uh, the detailed studies of these uh, communities showed that they uh, live in very uh, different uh, ecological niches and they were very flexible societies. So let's uh, have a closer look at feather method societies. Uh, they settle very uh, vast area from uh, Atlantic Ocean to River Book on the mm, on the east, and um, of course this area was very different in terms of the environmental conditions. Uh, the very important even at that time was the uh, volcano uh, eruption. Uh, and you can see uh, here the aberration uh, LST, Lacher Zee Tefra. I will tell a few uh, more words later about this uh, catastrophic event, uh, but let's have a closer look at further Messer societies. There are some Mm, typical uh, tools, so um, backed uh, pieces or backed uh, uh, points uh, with the, the straight retouch of the of the edge, and uh, very popular uh, short and scrapers, uh, which are called Tarnovian uh, and scrapers because. Um, it, uh, in, in Poland uh, that they were um, discovered at the site, which is called Tarnowa. Uh, so the, um, some examples of, uh, of uh, the Feder Messer art. Uh, it is my dream to find in <clears throat> our very sandy, uh, sites of the North European plain where uh, the mm, organic material is uh, very difficult to, to, to find, to find the very nice um, retoucher with this elk um, imagine, uh, imagination. I, I, I would like to to find something like, like this on my own excavations, but uh, I hope it uh, will uh, happen sometime. And I would like to pay your attention at uh, this figurine because uh, it was the first time um, when uh, amber was used at the large scale. Um, these communities uh, settled the, the vast area and they also mm, settled the uh, areas which were very close to the um, sea belt. So the amber was quite uh, easy to uh, find. And we can also observe uh, at the site uh, Grabov in northern Germany, uh, where almost um, 15,000 of amber beads uh, were found, and probably they um, were applied on the on the um, clothes. Uh, which uh, were made of uh, of fur. So um, 
this is the the beginning of um, of amber uh, story in late uh, glacial and Mesolithic uh, times. And I would like to show you uh, some uh, diversity of um, of environment. Uh, should be the names of um, trees or um, uh, herbaceous. Sorry, because they are un un invisible because they are uh, white. I, I didn't uh, change it, but you can uh, you can see um, betula, uh, birch, uh, uniperus, and larix. Um, Artemisia, for example, and Henopodiaceae, so some herbaceous uh, plants, and uh, different um, amount of uh, uh, those uh, trees and herbaceous uh, uh, plants uh, which were um, present at that time, at, for example, at Polish territory, that we have um, a quite visible border between western part, western, western and eastern part of, of Poland. And um, I try to um, recognize the differences uh, in environmental conditions between uh, some parts of North European plains. So I choose the representative um, uh, course, uh, which were investigated in terms of uh, palynology and which were well uh, dated. It wasn't so easy because not, um, uh, not always uh, the core of biogenic, um, biogenic sediments um, are from the um, all the dryas to, uh, to to younger dryas, so we have some high um, hiatus, and uh, not always uh, the biogenic sediments um, have a good material for C14 uh, dating. But there are some uh, some results, and uh, I would like to compare the, 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 the share of uh, pollen uh, grains um, of different and um, of different uh, trees and plants, which are very important in environmental uh, reconstructions. So there are some important trees like uh, Betula nana, so um, very small uh, birches, or uh, hip hippophar, so uh, the, the very important um, uh, uh, bush uh, uh, for late glacial um, environmental reconstructions, and uh, some herbaceous plants like Artemisia or um, Henopodiat. And we can see very uh, different uh, share of this uh, um, uh, vegetation in different parts of uh, Europe. Uh, so for example, Pinus in Rima, it is a Belgian uh, site, uh, is only uh, dots, so very low amount. And for example, in Reichwalde, in eastern part of um, Germany, the share of, of these uh, pollen grains is completely uh, different. There are also differences between Denim sites and from Denmark and uh, from uh, Poland, uh, for example, uh, Betula, uh, Betula Nana, so uh, this um, uh, birch, uh, which is um, present, uh, which is present at uh, Arctic uh, uh, areas uh, in Denmark, 
and at, that's at the same time in in Poland, in western part of Poland. And uh, when we modeled um, uh, dates, C14 dates, which were obtained uh, from the um, biogenic, uh, from the from the core of biogenic uh, sediments, uh, we uh, could see the differences between environmental changes and different parts of Europe. So uh, here we have the chromosomes and um, the uh, all periods of uh, late glacials, so oldest dryas, building older dryas, other and younger dryas, and the um, sites uh, from uh, from the Netherlands, uh, from Denmark, Germany, and and Poland, and we can see. Uh, different chromosome, chromosomes for uh, the same period of time. And uh, we, can, um, we can show that there is um, at least 200 years um, differences or, um, between uh, uh, no, um, it would be better to, to, to say like that, that the environmental changes in the Western part of Europe are 200 um, years earlier than in Eastern part of uh, Europe. So um, as we can see, the um, environment uh, and, and the environment was uh, change in different periods at different areas, which also uh, influence the late glacial societies. And uh, here we have um, calibrated and modeled uh, C14 dates for Federmesser settlement at the North European uh, plain. And um, I uh, divided uh, this settlement into five chronological ranges. And as we can see in the first um, chronological range, the settlement was very uh, scattered and um, uh, was um, not... Uh, uh, focus, but we can uh, observe uh, three spots of this uh, settlement in different parts of uh, North European uh, plain. In the second chronological range, we uh, can observe that the settlement, let's say, moved to the uh, western part of Europe. And um, in the uh, third chronological range, uh, we have um, the broadest settlement at the North European plain of the Federmesser uh, communities. So we can um, see the, let's say, expansion uh, in the Western uh, direction and Eastern uh, direction. And uh, during the uh, fourth chronological range, uh, we have uh, we have a uh, scattered um, settlement. We can divide the Western and, and Eastern part. And in the five chronological range, uh, this, uh, let's say the same, uh, the same uh, situation. So as you can see here, I um, made this uh, slide for uh, comparison of uh, these different periods, uh, we can observe uh, quite a um, uh, huge movement of, of these uh, societies. And this is the, the last uh, uh, chronological branch. And if we put together chronological range and the um, climate fluctuations, we can see
see that um, people uh, who uh, lived uh, at that time uh, choose uh, two ways. Uh, the, the first was the, the negative feedback uh, to the um, um, environmental changes. And it means that they moved to the areas uh, which, where the environmental conditions were the same uh, in the, um, the same at the place where they lived. And the positive feedback is that some in some periods uh, they uh, could adapt, they could live in the in the same region, even if the environmental uh, conditions, uh, climatic conditions um, changed. So uh, we these societies um, can be uh, see. Uh, longer as uh, very um, dependent on environmental conditions because they have <clears throat> their own strategies uh, to respond to the climatic uh, changes. And uh, if we uh, talk about the uh, Federal Messer population, uh, we can see that this population was very flexible and they could um, exist in the park tundra and in the um, um, <clears throat> sparse uh, um, woodland because uh, when the, in, during the alert period was quite warm, even if this uh, uh, warm period was broken by some um, cool, um, very cold uh, periods and uh, climatic uh, breakdown. Uh, and they uh, could live also in Park uh, Tundra, uh, which uh, is characteristic for the um, younger dryas. So these communities are very flexible. <clears throat> and the hunting uh, activities um, uh, which were undertaken um, by these communities was also very diversified. Of course, uh, we have a very big problem with um, uh, bone remains at the North European plain because uh, the area is very sandy and we have acidic um, soils. Uh, but sometimes uh, we are lucky and we can find um, some burnt bones uh, or uh, some um, hunting equipment like harpoons um, or this uh, um, tool uh, for um, fishing and uh, uh, we can also recognize the changing subsistence strategies uh, so we have the uh, big uh, game uh, during the first chronological range and we can also see the different differentiation um, during the uh, chronological range, so during the, the time of uh, Father Messer existence. And what is very important, we can see the variety of, um, of uh, hunting, uh, the, the variety of game at the end of uh, uh, their existence. So um, during the uh, late part of the um, alert and the first uh, uh, at, at the beginning at the beginning of Yankel Dryas. So in this um, uh, shift in, in in this period of shift from very good to very bad uh, conditions. And uh, as you can see, 
we have uh, here some uh, big game, but also small uh, mammals like beaver, like um, hers, and uh, also the uh, rising share of uh, fishes. And what is very important, what is very important, I have to um, come back to this picture and uh, I um, told a few words about the LST. It was a huge disaster which, uh, ha <clears throat> which uh, has um, happened um, during the um, end of Alaret. Uh, I mean the huge eruption of um, volcano, which is, is located uh, near Bonn in the uh, western part of Germany. And uh, the um, tufts of uh, ashes and tufts of uh, this um, volcano eruption are known from the very wide area of, uh, of uh, Europe. So we can um, observe uh, this tephra or micro tephra um, grains on the uh, northeastern part of, uh, of Europe. We can also see uh, some new sites in, at Wengline and Wojnowo in western part of Poland, and also in southern and um, southwestern part of, um, of uh, Europe. How huge was uh, this um, catastrophe? We can see uh, the eight uh, or even 10 meters of uh, volcanic ashes um, which uh, are um, present at, uh, at the area where the um, volcano erupted, so um, near uh, Bonn. And uh, here is the huge caldera, which um, occurred after the eruption of, uh, of this uh, volcano. And here we have uh, some studies of uh, micro of tephra and micro tephra, uh, which uh, was uh, present <clears throat> uh, on uh, cores uh, inside the cores uh, in, of biogenic uh, sediments from western part of, of Poland. So we can see that um, also uh, these areas. Um, were influenced by um, uh, volcano eruption. I uh, mean, maybe not so directly, but for sure the environmental conditions uh, changed um, uh, because after the eruption, it is something like um, something like. Um, artificial uh, winter uh, because huge amount of ashes um, um, change the uh, sun uh, rises on the on the earth so uh, we can uh, see here some traces uh, on um, volcano uh, ashes at uh, in in Neubasin, where the um, volcano is uh, is located, but we have to um, bear in our mind that also this uh, Lacherzee eruption um, had uh, an impact on um, people. And uh, you can see the, the studies of um, Felix Ride and his uh, colleague um, that uh, these uh, particles of, of uh, ash um, can could influence our um, people uh, human human uh, lungs and uh, could uh, uh, evoke very um, important uh, health problems. And 
in these two um, results, so mental health and religious life, uh, are very elusive for archaeological studies. But we cannot exclude that um, this event uh, has had a very important meaning on uh, these people, like nowadays. And um, according to Felix Brome, who uh, studied uh, the tile, the tile, who um, lead the tiled uh, studies of this uh, Federmesser and Brome settlement, in, in his opinion, the, the Brome settlement, the, the Brome culture, is the result of um, breaking uh, networks, uh, uh, breaking um, uh, exchange system of uh, Federmesser uh, population after this, this uh, catastrophe. So it is one of the hypotheses. And what is the, the problem with Brome uh, settlement? It was studied by uh, Michał Kobusiewicz some years ago that uh, this uh, very uh, nice uh, link points uh, is um, present at many archaeological sites uh, in the very uh, vast area, uh, even in uh, in the area of, of Moscow. And uh, there is a, still a big discussion if it is really the Roma settlement or it is only the uh, idea of um, Lingbe uh, point um, use because probably it was very which like Kawashnikov uh, now. And uh, the last issue which um, I could uh, I, I, I would uh, present is the, the settlement of the um, people who uh, use um, tanked points. So uh, as you can see, Sviderian and uh, Arensburgian uh, settlement at uh, the North uh, European plain and also some uh, Beloisian uh, settlement, uh, which is called sometimes a long blade uh, industry, which uh, is uh, seen as the bridge between um, late Paleolithic and Mesolithic time uh, at some part, uh, Mesolithic industries at some parts uh, of, of the uh, North European uh, plain, uh, we can see that the um, younger dryas uh, environmental conditions were very harsh and, um, and very unstable uh, because uh, at the end of this period of time, the very important cli uh, climatic uh, changes um, took uh, place. So in the very short uh, period of time, uh, the environment, uh, the environment um, changed, changed totally. And the, the warm period of uh, Holocene uh, times um, has uh, started. So um, sometimes um, people were the witness of, uh, of these dramatic changes uh, which uh, could uh, uh, took place at the, the period, at the period of one generation. Uh, the Younger Dryas is probably the, the most uh, well-known uh, global climate um, shift. And uh, it is um, the, the, the same environmental changes uh, took place at the North European plain and, and the North um, America. And uh, it is the, the time when um, 
the amount of wild fires um, increased uh, dramatically. So it is um, believed that the environmental uh, conditions and the type of um, soil, sandy soil at the North European plain um, was the, were the, the factors which uh, could um, increase the, the amount of, of wild fires. And uh, we can also observe the increase of charcoal uh, records um, at, uh, very, at many archaeological sites. And uh, scientists uh, were very um, curious what, what, what has uh, happened, why the uh, Younger Dryas uh, um, has uh, started. And um, the records which uh, are discovered at the uh, almost all uh, the whole globe um, suggest that uh, there was um, um, an impact uh, from um, cosmos uh, because um, uh, the quite a big peak concentrations of platinum and high temperature spherulous melt glass uh, is um, observed at different uh, place at, uh, at, um, at the earth. Uh, so this uh, cosmic impact could um, uh, initiate the uh, climatic changes during the younger uh, dryas. Uh, it is uh, um, one of the um, possible hypotheses of, of this uh, cooling of, of climate. And of course, we can see some taxonomic um, problems uh, which uh, have uh, archaeologists from Germany and, and, and Poland. Was it uh, Arensburgian settlement or Sfiderian settlement? Because uh, they uh, we base uh, on the um, type of the tanked point uh, um, which was used by the societies and this the, the Arensburgian um, uh, point like this um, uh, doesn't have the red touch on the ventral side of, of the of the tank and the Skidarian uh, one uh, has uh, um, this uh, retouch, so there is the only difference between these two types of uh, 10 points and the discussion, I think that uh, lasts now more than um, almost uh, almost uh, 100 uh, years and uh, there are still some uh, some big discussions. So sometimes it's better to uh, call these settlement uh, uh, societies with tanked points or techno complex of, of tanked points. And uh, I also would show you how um, um, how broad was the uh, exchange network um, uh, by Sfiderian um, uh, people in, in, in Poland. There are some of the raw materials because there is one of the factors uh, by, by uh, I mean we can um, study this, this uh, issue. So uh, the, the raw material from uh, Poland, uh, chocolate, I mean chocolate flint, uh, was uh, found on, at many sites, not only in the area of uh, present-day Poland and uh, obsidians uh, from the area of uh, Slovakia um, are found uh, at um, our sites. So quite a big uh, network uh, system. And what has happened with uh, these people? There are many uh, uh, ideas uh, that 
people of uh, late Glacian people could um, adapt to uh, new uh, Holocene conditions, uh, or maybe was it population uh, uh, change? The discussion uh, has started many, many years ago, and it's um, still very hot. For example, uh, 20 years ago, Professor Shield published uh, the paper, Three Reasons Why It Is Likely That the Early Mesolithic Population in Poland Was Not Aborig Aboriginal. And uh, just a few months ago, um, Tomasz Ponka, Dariusz Bobak, uh, and Dariusz Bobak published the, the paper, The Down of the Mesolithic of the Plains of Poland. And these authors are against uh, the hypothesis that it was uh, um, a visible break uh, between late glacial and uh, Holocene settlement uh, in uh, this area. And uh, we uh, usually, based on uh, some uh, C14 uh, dates and uh, uh, modeling of this of these dates. There is the you know, hypothesis uh, which uh, was uh, published by uh, Jacek Kabaczyński and me some years ago about the crucial uh, gap between between these uh, uh, two types of settlement. I mean, uh, late Paleolithic uh, one and Mesolithic uh, Mesolithic one, and uh, our colleagues. Um, uh, Benaid is a hypothesis uh, basing on uh, basing on uh, more uh, C14 uh, dates, but I just um, want to uh, notice that uh, these dates um, have very very huge uh, standard deviation, and I hope I could answer on 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 this. Um, on uh, these uh, uh, ideas uh, and the discussion is very hot because this is the crucial part of uh, uh, our discipline and uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, at all. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. attention. Thank you very much, Ivona. I, I wanted to just only show the dynamic of uh, climatic uh, change and the, the flexibility of people uh, to use the, the environment and to use the hunting strategies and, and so on. So, um, because sometimes hunter gatherers are mm, seen as a very um, stable societies. And uh, now we can see that the, the picture is completely different. Yeah, of course, because <laughs> they uh, saw floods, volcanic activity, uh, yeah. wildfires, and <laughs> at last a comet. Yes. As these uh, sites are all in plain, uh, these people probably use the tents. How can you find all these sites? How can we find uh, the um, traces of the of the uh, tents? Uh, oh, it's, no, it's your general. How do you find it? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's very difficult, especially at at the sandy area. But sometimes we we are lucky and we have some uh, traces of, um, for example, uh, uh, huge uh, stones. Uh, which uh, were um, um, located uh, around uh, the or in the shape of, of the of the circle, or sometimes we uh, um, can define the, the area of um, the domestic area of the um, dispersion of, of flint uh, materials and, and so on. Sometimes we have some stone slabs, for example, uh, like in Olbrachtice uh, site in, in, in Poland, 
but um, we don't really have um, much of uh, such uh, traces. So it's very difficult to, to study this, uh, this issue. Um, do you think the people understood that there was a volcanic eruption? Or, I mean, uh, they didn't, I think they didn't, they were far, too far away from the volcano to know what happened or what do you think? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, mm, this uh, this uh, people in, in Poland or in, in uh, Bornholm Island, uh, for sure. But um, the, the settlement in, in Neuwied uh, Basin, in west uh, in western part of uh, germany was very intensive and uh, i think that um, those people uh, were influenced uh, really uh, by the volcano uh, eruption uh, because we have um, also some traces of uh, the of the um, Woodland, which uh, uh, was uh, destroyed by by this uh, volcano um, fire and uh, the very um, strong wind, uh, so I think that uh, those people who who lived uh, um, in the vicinity uh, were uh, influenced by by uh, the volcano dramatically um like they didn't they maybe thought also it was like something from us we don't know what they thought religiously but i mean if they understood that it's like a, a natural natural phenomena or what it was we can't know Yes, of course. Uh, I, I agree with, with you that uh, we, I think that we, um, this issue is very elusive for archaeologists. Yes, so we, we can't um, reconstruct or, or discover uh, what they, what they uh, thought, but I think that it, it was uh, dramatic uh, experience uh, for for them, as it did, as it is uh, now. So, I just wanted to to show you that uh, these people were witnesses of many disasters, and uh, they didn't have uh, such uh, means as we have to protect or to to. Um, to fight with the, 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 the results of uh, such disasters. So, um, yes, flexible societies. <laughs> Ivona, what do you think? Uh, is it methodologically right to define the archaeological cultures by the mor <laughs> morphology of uh, arrowheads? <laughs> Good questions. <laughs> Good question. Uh, I um, published together with Katja Winkler the paper on, on this on this issue, and uh, I think that is uh, um, it is very um, simple strategy, and uh, it is rooted in our in the beginnings of our discipline, but uh, I think that we can um, see these uh, people a little bit different uh, now and uh, uh, have uh, and pay our attentions uh, um, attention on um, different uh, uh, factors like uh, subsistence strategies uh, or um, uh, yes, subsistence strategies or or technology of uh, of uh, raw material processing. So I think it's uh, the, the better way because sometimes it's it's a very um, uh, commission. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with you because it's uh, complicated for the territory of Ukraine because we have uh, Svidrian complexes not only in northern part but also in Crimea. Yeah, <laughs> know something <laughs> about <And> it. <laughs> Crimean uh, layers uh, are more Svidrian than uh, northern uh, assemblages because in uh, northern uh, sites we have Swedian plus Einsburgian uh, points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But in, in, in Crimean Swedian we have only Swedian points. <laughs> so, <laughs> but what do you think about the uh, eastern border of Federmesser? Uh, can we found some uh, sites on the territory of Ukraine? <laughs> what <do> you think? <laughs> because we, yeah. we have several sites on the territory of Zhitomir region uh, with uh, uh, lanceolate Beckett points, uh, which quite uh, similar, quite look like the Federmesser point. Uh, I would be very happy to, to see these inventories, not only yeah. on, on, on your publications, and uh, I would be very happy to, um, to um, broaden the, the area of uh, <laughs> Fatal Messel settlement because it is my favorite uh, cultural and favorite um, uh, late glacial uh, settlement. And um, I think that it, it, is, um, it is possible, but uh, I, I think that we now... Um, Um, see this uh, this complex uh, from the Atlantic Ocean to Book uh, River uh, because um, where the uh, where the basis of 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 the um, of this uh, culture were, were uh, built, we didn't know about uh, your uh, finds, and I think that it would be uh, nice to to compare the uh, inventories, the subsistence strategies, C14 dates, and maybe it is something uh, for us to cooperate <laughs> to extend the the um, the area of uh, Federal Master Settlement. So I do not exclude uh, this uh, possibility. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation and very uh, big work, huge work <laughs> for uh, making sense uh, such uh, uh, connection between environment, uh, climatic events and uh, human groups. It's very mm-hmm. nice. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your att- attention. And if anybody is interested in any issues, um, you can uh, write uh, me an email and I will be happy to, to answer all any questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>